All right, good day at the shop today. Uh, we have going on is this M365 uh, power pack, uh, battery pack. So this is uh, circa 2018. We'll see that on the subsequent pictures. And so the symptom this had, and do note that I have to show this on a screen, uh, was uh, basically the guy came over, told me that his scooter wouldn't charge. And the reason why it wouldn't charge was that the ninth bank was registering above 4.1, right? So with the latest, um, at least at the time, uh, BMS firmware, I think it's, oh my God, what is it? Let me see if I can. So the BMS version uh, 115, it only charges the cells up to 4.1, which is kind of like, what, 70% charge? This is, however bad this is for range, this is very good for uh, extending the health of your, of your cells. Right, not charging lithium ion to 100% is extremely beneficial to them. Uh, and I think the reason why they do this is to allow regen breaking to always be possible, right? So if you have all your cells charged to 4.2, uh, you will not, it will not be legal to pump more charge into them, right? If you start going down a 50 kilometer hill, mm, you will lose regen breaking at some point. Maybe you rely on it, who knows anyway. So it only charges to 4.1. It sees that this is 4.18, although all of them were like 3. 8.7, 3.9, kind of there, right? I measured them externally and all of them were uh, were balanced, right? They had like, I don't know, 50 millivolts tops between them. However, this was registering super high, super high. So when you want to charge it, it'll say that, yeah, yeah, not charging because this is, uh, is at 100%, right? Is even above 100%, this, uh, this bank, the ninth bank. And when you wanted to discharge, it would go ahead and discharge, but then it'd see this go below, I don't know where they have the cutoff at, but typically it's three volts, right? So the moment this would go below three volts, it would cut off the entire pack. It would try balancing, and it has tried balancing, and in doing so, it has actually unbalanced uh, these, uh, these banks, right? So this would get charged quite a lot higher. Anyway, so this was the symptom. Uh, two cells, two banks were di were polarized, let's say. One was a sh reading super high and one was reading super low. And the thing to note here is that they are adjacent banks, right? This, this will become very important later on. All right, and uh, so yeah, what I went ahead and done is, um, went ahead and did, went ahead and done. Went ahead and did. I'm gonna go with did. Is uh, right, you wanna disconnect one of the wires because this is uh, very short and you do not want the full 48 volt pack connected to the stuff you're working on. Uh, you'll want to get either a hair dryer, let me get some light on, either a hair dryer or a uh, heat gun. Go 100 or uh, 150 degrees, something like that, and melt. And the, the glue on the ends, right? and then you want to gently, very gently push this up. You'll also want to disconnect the bottom thermistor, right? It has two temperature sensors. One is connected to the BMS motherboard, and one is connected to uh, one of these daughter boards, uh, interconnect daughter boards, all right? So once this is free to slide out, you'll want to push this out, and the moment you get enough uh, leverage. Again, you'll want to heat this up and run. Mm, these are very good, right? These ceramic um, tweezers are non-conductive, so you can poke around and they do not melt. Unlike, um, unlike uh, other utensils you might have lying around. All right, so just a tiny bit further. We're just gonna disconnect this. 
should stop heart beating. What the fuck? All right. All right. I make sure not to bend this back and forth too many times. It looks brutal as fuck. And so let's get this out and uh, have a quick look at it. All right. Again, be extremely careful where you lay this down and think about some exit plan if this shit starts fuming and uh, going berserk because it is pretty bad. All right. Um, yeah, so basically what we have going on here Jesus, I am literally terrified of moving this shit around. Let me clear all the metal bits from, from around here. All right. So what we have here, let me clean the screen on this. Very good trick to uh, cleaning grease off of screens is actually getting distilled water. Because this somehow clings to uh, fat extremely well. That the oleophobic coating is uh, helping quite a lot, but uh, trust me, 100% alcohol would work way worse than this has. All right, so. What we have on the, let me see how we can uh, arrange this, all right. So we have a small ST microprocessor here, which does all the housekeeping and talks to the mothership. And uh, what we have over here, let's see if we can get a part number off this. I think it's this way around. Let me see if I can get a good angle. Jesus, that's super bad. Anyway, what we have here is the BP76930 which is a BMS chip, basically, for this kind of application. And what you can see here is it has a bunch of capacitors here. Huh? Um, they haven't followed this fully because there, there's, there's a different number of caps here to here, or they may be populated somewhere else. I don't know. But anyway, they want capacitors between... Uh, between all the cells just to cut off any interference that might uh, piss off the ADCs in here, right? And basically given that uh, this cell, right, this last one was reading low and this one was reading high, right, one would suspect that something is pulling this point here high, right? It's pulling this point high, right? So Capacitors often do go either short circuit fully or low impedance. Um, to be honest, what I initially suspected was something happening over these diodes, right? Because these um, these two points are actually um, this this top point is actually connected to a bunch a bunch of other things, right? Uh, but the easiest thing to, to to look at was this capacitor which, uh, right, uh, you would need to go to the pinout. Uh, this is just a stylized version. This is not the actual pinout. Let's see where we can find that. Yeah, please bear in mind, this is a four-year-old iPad, so that's why it's loading so slowly. Uh, no, we need the 30. Yeah. All right, so pin one, and pin one would be where the dot is, which would be here at the bottom. So we would line it up like this and see that all the um, balancing balancing uh, pens are on this side and you can see they go out to the capacitors and then to the socket, which would go out to the pack itself. All right. So yeah, then basically just uh, measure out, uh, beep out with the multimeter uh, VC10 and you do see that it actually does go to CF... Uh, 10? No, it actually goes to CF1, so they actually did not maintain the naming convention. That would have been nice, but yeah. And uh, yeah, I just popped that off. And something has happened here. I have yet to deeply investigate it, but um, 
this little bit of solder that you can see here, it's actually clinging onto something. So something has happened here. I'm not sure what the, right? It's clinging on to this uh, trace, which somehow has not gotten solder resist. So basically under the cap, right? Um, the footprint of the cap has the solder resist removed. And then they have this trace running off to the connector. And then this trace running off to ground, I would believe. Or, I don't know, I think it's, I, th mm, I don't know where this is going, heading off. But anyway, this has meant there's a very small gap here. So any amount of bullshit that gets in here. And uh, to be honest, it feels kind of rugged. So feels a bit charred, a bit carbonized. I don't know how much of that is due to the fact that I... Uh, heated up the solder, the uh, conformal coating, because this is conformally coated. I don't know how much of that is uh, due to soldering or something actually having happened. But uh, yeah, case in point, I have removed this capacitor and uh, now it is reading fine. So let's see. Last time I checked. Um, everything has went back to normal. Um, one of the packs was actually reading quite high, and but uh, we have gone to a maximum delta of like 70 millivolts. So yeah, basically that is um, that was the fix in this case. I uh, will try to analyze this capacitor, this uh, tiny SMD piece of shit. Maybe put it back, maybe not. I. Uh, I think I'll leave it off because these have also the shortest traces, so there will be quite little interference on these lines. I mean, come on. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'll uh, have to decide that. But uh, yeah, apart from that, I'll just put it back together. Don't forget to put the heat shrink, uh, tape the heat shrink back onto this. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And um, wish you good luck with your scooter. Have fun.